on everybody it's Jet Central coming back with another video and in this one I wanted to recap today's game between the New York Jets at the Miami Dolphins okay and the Dolphins were victorious final score 13 to 6 and um you know, it, it, pretty sloppy game, pretty lackluster game by both squads to say the least, but I have to give credit where it's due. I need to credit the Miami Dolphins for making the plays that they needed to make to win this game. Okay, they made the plays, the New York Jets did, clearly did not. Okay, but I want to quickly uh, apologize, you know, it's 8.20 p.m. right now over here on the East Coast. want to quickly apologize for the late upload. You know, I know it's, it's a late night vid and stuff like that, and, and normally I like to get the videos up as soon as the game concludes, you know, the recap videos and stuff, but I was actually lucky enough to uh, to attend today's game, so I'm just getting back to my place now, so I do apologize for the late upload, and I, I just want to say thank you and uh, that I appreciate everybody that's stuck around and that's pretty much bared with me and stuck stuck with me through uh, through today, and really stuck, stuck with the New York Jets as well, but... I, I want to start the video off by saying this, okay? I want to start the video off by addressing the New York Jets' current coaching situation, all right? Because this needs to be addressed. It needs to be talked about right now, and I cannot wait to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section because I know there's a lot of people on both sides of the fence here. And here are my thoughts. Todd Bowles, Casey Rogers, Jeremy Bates, I'm at my wit's end. I, I, I think I'm officially out. I'm done. I'm done with it. I don't want it to seem like I'm a negative Nancy, a Debbie Downer, or I'm just bashing this team or I'm bad mouthing the team. I'm. Re I really don't. I, I really hope I'm not coming off it in that way. I'm just looking through it as looking through this through looking at the whole situation through a really unbiased and honest lens. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to be honest with myself. Do I envision this New York Jets team having tons of su tons of success moving forward with Todd Bowles as our head coach? I would have to say no. I, I can't see this team, this New York Jets team, this current team, moving forward with Bates and Rodgers and, and Bowles and, and just us, um, you know, having an having an opportunity to win the AFC East uh, for years to come. I, I don't envision that at all. Um, I like the defense. I really do like the defense. We're young. We're fast. We're hungry. I like that. Um, I, I do think we're going in the right direction. Yeah, we do still need some help on the edge. We still need some outside linebacking uh, depth overall. We need we need to get healthy. But from you know top to bottom, I, I really like this defense. Okay, I really do like the defense. But here's the issue: outside of the defense. Everything else about this team is horrible. We can't throw the ball. We can't run the ball. We can't protect Sam Darnold. The offensive line play is god awful. It is horrible. The especially the interior of the offensive line. Brian Winters is getting beat all day. Spencer's long Spencer long snaps are it, it's an F minus. It's horrible. It's horrendous. How can you even, if you're Sam Darnold, how can you tr how can you have any trust in your center, or um, you know how can you even have the confidence to run a play where you don't even know where the snap is going to end up? I mean, I feel like it's week to week on a week to week basis that Sam Darnold's jumping up in the air to get the snap, picking the snap up off the dirt, having to you know juke to his right, juke to his left, whatever it is to get the snap. Can we please figure out how to snap the football to Sam Darnold in the shotgun? We cannot do that. It cost us today. It was a huge. I mean, there was multiple snaps that were messed up uh, along, you know, throughout the whole tenure of the season. There's been many messed up snaps, but today in particular, there were too many of them. And granted, the field, you know, field was a little wet, but it didn't rain. I was, you know, I was at the game. It, it wasn't treacherous. You know, it wasn't a monsoon out there by any means. It didn't even sprinkle. So an NFL center should be able to snap the ball to the quarterback. You know, a, a rookie quarterback who, mind you, is only 21 years old, uh, you have to have confidence in your center to get you the football. So, the uh, again, we can't throw it. We can't run it. We can't block them. The center, or the, uh, the interior of the offensive line play is just, hor you know, it's horrible. It's just awful. We shoot ourselves in the foot constantly, week after week after week after week. It's whether we're just getting so many dumb penalties on us, whether it's holdings, whether it's pass interference, face mask, whatever the case is, it's just penalty delay of games. Okay, so that's another uh, asterisk next to Todd Bowles' name. The penalties. Okay, so right now, I mean, on our list, like I said, we can't throw it, we can't run it, we have bad offensive line play, young rookie quarterback who's going to turn the ball over, and uh, we're shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties. Okay, another thing to take into consideration: special teams blunders. Why does why do I feel like this this Jets team? So why do I feel like this Jets, um, the Jets offense always takes, we start our drives within our own 15 almost every single play 
or every single series of every single drive. I feel like we're always backed up in our own territory and we have to go 90 yards. Can we please get some good field position here? I just feel like the special teams blunders, whether it's fumbling, you know, on punt returns. Andre Roberts has actually had a really nice season. But from, you know, from time to time, whether it's on the offensive side of the special teams, right, kicking a field goal, whatever, you know, what have you, or on the defensive side, I feel like special teams is such a... God, it, we're, we're just uh, hindered by it so much because we're always pinned back deep. We, we're never in good field position. And, um, you know, Myers missed a field goal today, but he's having a pretty solid year. But uh, like I said, and then the uh, the punt coverage, you know, when when we're punting the ball away, it's just horrible. I feel like the New York Jets, uh, we always give up big plays, and the the opposing team is always starting their drives at the 35, at their own 40, you know, not at their own 15, not their own eight yard line, which we're always starting at the, you know, at that uh, at that point uh, to start drives. I, I just feel like that's unacceptable. Okay, another issue that you have to bring up when you talk about Todd Bowles is time management. Time management, game situations, in-game scenarios. You know, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard for this Bulls coaching staff to understand that we cannot just burn timeouts? Understanding game situations, like I said, understanding that, okay, we have to get in and out of the huddle here. We only have 40 seconds. We only have 20 seconds, 25 seconds on the play clock. We have to move. We have to keep this thing going. And, you know, for the people that say, oh, we have a rookie quarterback, that's fine. It's completely understandable. But it doesn't explain last year with Josh McCown, the, the delay of games. It doesn't explain the, you know, the, the previous year with Ryan Fitzpatrick. It just, it doesn't explain that. The, the delay of game, the, the time management is horrible. Burning them so early in the halves, it's unacceptable. Un absolutely unacceptable. Um, you know, wasting timeouts, just putting the Jets in bad situations, just being confused. I mean, let's face it, the reason why we are getting the delay of games, the reason why we are calling the timeouts is because we're confused. We don't know what's going on, whether we can't get the play in, nobody knows what to do. And so we have to f call a timeout to regroup, to then relay the information back to the offense and uh, move forward from there. So wasting timeouts, time management is just absolutely horrible. There's no sense of urgency at all. No sense of urgency at all with this Jets offense. It's just really frustrating. You know, in today's game, for example, you know, we're going down um, uh, late in the game. Fourth and 15. Okay, fourth and 15 with two timeouts left and the two-minute warning on the clock. And we're going for it midfield. What is that? What Who made that decision to go for it on fourth and 15? That makes zero sense. You punt the ball. You try to pin Miami back. If you don't, that's fine. They get at their own 25. You don't go for it in 4th and 15. All you're doing by doing that, by electing to, to go for it, is you're putting Sam Darnold in a position to fail where his back is against the wall, his 4th and 15 at midfield. You could punt the ball, call two timeouts, and, and use your two-minute war you know, use the luxury of the two-minute warning. It's absolutely unacceptable. And granted, the defense stepped up and, and had a three and out, and the offense got the ball back, and then they... They couldn't make it happen, okay? The point is, is that the offense cannot do anything, okay? I understand it. We have a rookie quarterback. We are dealing with injuries. We are young. We are, we're, we're not that talented. We're not the Atlanta Falcons. We're not the Pittsburgh Steelers out there by any means, okay? I understand it. But I just feel as though this New York Jets coaching staff, we just get in our own way. I feel like in no way, shape, or form does Todd Bowles help out in the offense, at all. I just feel like the New York Jets are at their best when the coaching staff gets out of the way. And if you're an NFL franchise, if you're a fan of an NFL franchise, you have to look at yourself in the you know, you have to look at that team and sit there and say, that's a problem. This coaching staff needs to be helping this team, elevating this team, not hindering it, hindering them. The Todd Bowles shouldn't be a crutch to the offense. He should be lifting them up. You know, he shouldn't be he shouldn't be uh you know, dead weight that, that they're carrying that it's just unacceptable, you know? So in a perfect world, I would like to see Todd Bowles. I, I think he's a top three defensive coordinator in this league, but everything else, every other situation of the, you know, that revolves around the, of the, the game of football, passing game, running game, offensive line play, penalties, special teams, in-game scenarios, Makes absolutely no adjustments whatsoever. And then, you know, to come out in the uh, the postgame presser, uh, we, you know, we were watching on the way home, him, him to just say, like, oh, we, we just didn't execute. Like, can you please, 
take some blame and just say the you know we 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 didn't put the players in the best situation today. We only scored six points. We held the Miami Dolphins to thirteen points. Really, six points. Six points because they got a pick six off the offense. When Darnold turned the ball over, he turned it over four times, but one of them I don't really count because it's in the end of the game. The Dolphins didn't benefit any, you know, they didn't benefit from that. So with three interceptions and constantly going three and out and three and out and three and out, the defense only gave up six points. The defense did their job. They did their job. And for Bolts to just come out there and just say, Oh, uh, we, you know, we, we just didn't execute and we just, we need to focus on execution. How about just take some blame? You know, maybe the blame isn't all on you. Maybe Darnold just had a, you know, just a horrible day mentally. And, you know, he, it was just, it was just bad in the offensive line, everything. Maybe Bulls had the perfect game plan, but just take the, take the fall, you know? So Jets lose to the Miami Dolphins. Um, and I, I don't want it to seem like I'm like you know, bad mouthing the team or anything like that. I'm just saying how I feel, you know, and I just feel like with the with the game plan going into the game, the Dolphins are ranked 31st, by the way, in rush defense, yet we run the ball, we barely run the ball, we don't even try to, to establish a run game. And this is the game, you know, this is the game where I felt as though we actually need to run the ball, like we need to keep on feeding Crowell. If we're not having success early, we, we, sh- we should stick with it because the Dolphins have shown this, you know, so far this year that they're not that good at defending it, especially, you know, inside handoffs yet we don't even bother you know it doesn't work out early we just completely go away from it very bothersome very just drives me up a wall you know to just to just to think about the offensive coordinator the defensive coordinator the head coach the only way the Jets look really good you know when, when they have a well-rounded game it's like when the coaching staff doesn't get involved and that's just a problem that's just not good that's you know I just cannot see you know, the New York Jets trotting Todd Bowles out there for next season. I just can't see that, okay? It, it, or I can see it, but as far as us having success, you know, maybe competing for an AFC, you know, the uh, the divisional title uh, for years to come, I don't think it's going to be under Bowles. Again, I love his defensive mind. I love his defensive system. I think he's a great defensive play caller. But as far as every other aspect of being a head coach, I think it's below average. It's below average. You have to have some say on offense. You have to be able to 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 make halftime adjustments. You have to understand the game of special teams. We have to understand that we can't just keep shooting ourselves in the foot, and we can't keep going backwards. And we can't. We have to let Sam Darnold grow. We have to develop him. We have to make sure that the prize jewel of the team, Sam Darnold, grows into the best quarterback that he that he can be. And so far, under Todd, do I trust Bowles to develop him? No, I don't. Um, so I want to hear your thoughts down below. I want to go into next season with an offensive minded head coach, a particularly a young offensive minded head coach, maybe a guy who hasn't really been around the block. I'm, I'm not necessarily hoping for a guy like Josh McDaniels, Hugh Jackson, Todd Haley. I don't want any of those guys. I don't, I want a young guy. I want an inter- an innovative guy to put Sam Darnold in the best position to win, uh, or to have success. I should say that can develop him. Look at Sean McVay in LA. Look at Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. Nick Mullins dominated the other night. Why? Because Shanahan built the system. He drafts players. He knows how to develop quarterbacks. I want that in New York. I feel as though the New York Jets defense, it's on the rise. We have great players. We need to get uh, the offense going. We need to get the offense to pick up some slack. Jamal Adams was very frustrated after the game. He said he's sick and tired of losing. I don't blame him. He's only been here for a year and a half, and he's already sick of it. I don't blame him at all. I mean, you look at guys, you know, around the around the New York Jets that have been there for a little bit. You you can't really name a you know name a bunch, and the young guys are already getting fed up with it. We need to we need to move forward. We, like move forward. We need to, we need to motivate. We need to get the offense up to speed. And when the offense cannot provide you with points on a consistent basis, or even a threat to go downfield, when we're just you know, so anemic, so bland, so vanilla, so obvious. When you have Jets fans, when you have Dolphins fans, when you have rival fans, when you have people on Twitter literally calling out the plays before the plays ran, that's an embarrassment. It's just, it's just frustrating. Um, so I want an offensive mind head coach. I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section regarding this matter, this coaching matter. And, um, Credit the Miami Dolphins. You know, they won the game as a hard-fought victory. Osweiler did not look great, but he made the plays. And that's another thing, too. I just quickly want to bring up. I know it's 14 minutes. I know I'm rambling here. 
But why is it that we cannot stop a crossing route? The Jaguars did it to us and killed us. The, I mean, the Dolphins did it today and killed us. You know, just whether it's a f- simple five and in, a simple, just a shallow, you know, shallow crossing routes with the mesh routes, whatever, you know, whatever it is, five and outs, they kill us every time and we can't adjust to them. Why can't we adjust to them? Get your guys playing up more to the line of scrimmage. Um, and trust your corners on one-on-one match one-on-one matchups on the outside. Bring that strong safety down. Bring Jamal Adams in the box and like, let's go. We need to motivate. We need to motivate here. We need to um, we need to get better. We need to get better at the game of football. I know it's a lot easier said than done. I know it doesn't. You know the whole team isn't fixed in one night. But we have Buffalo next week. It's a very winnable game. But I thought today was a very winnable game. I thought we were going to win this game. I really did believe that. And then we were going to beat Buffalo and be five and five, having two weeks of. Per- to prepare for New England, I thought that would have been great. Okay, but uh, we dropped the game against Miami, and we lose by one score. Tough loss. tough, Very tough pill to swallow. But like I said, credit Miami. They they won the hard-fought victory, and um, I'll leave it there. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I apologize for ranting. I apologize for dishing out my thoughts. It's just how I'm feeling right now. just really feel as though this every loss that the Jets have, it, it's a it, it's a big part in, in, in part, or it, it's a... Um, Every loss is just so coaching influence, and it just drives me up a wall. So I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Jets.